Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 92, making predictions for 2014. First thing, I am just really happy with True Name Nemesis. I know that a lot of people are a little bit discouraged playing against him in Legacy, but he is amazing. Wonderful for a fair deck. There's a lot of ways to deal with him. I've got a whole video on how to deal with True Name Nemesis. I'm predicting that by the end of the year, True Name Nemesis will continue to make an impact on Legacy and will be up to $70. Now, I know you're saying, Brian, that's crazy. It's in a pre-constructed commander deck that you can buy for $30. Well, let's look at that for a second. In order to get a true name nemesis, stores have to order a complete set of commander decks. They have to order all five commander decks. The other four commander decks right now are already selling online for retail or less. I've been able to see several of those commander decks as low as $20. Why? Because of true name nemesis. People are buying an entire set and then trying to sell the rest of the commander decks. This is great. It puts a lot of commander product out there on the market and makes it really easy for people to get into commander. With those others going down, True Name Nemesis is still going to maintain the price because it's going to make up the difference that a entire case, when you're short selling those other items, you're making up the profit on True Name Nemesis. Number nine spot here is fetch lands. Now, Wizard has to do something about Scalding Tarn and Misty Rainforest. They're already at $55. If they don't see a reprint, they're going to hit $90 by modern season. But my prediction here is that hopefully Wizards will find a way to put these into some type of eternal product that comes out before modern season. Some type of modern event decks. Some way that individuals can pick these up for less and that they'll go back down to a reasonable $20, $30 range. And the number eight spot here, Scavenging Ooze. It's hit its low. You can pick it up pretty easily right now for about seven and a half, eight dollars $8. But by year's end, he's not going to be reprinted in M15, and he's going to double in price because he is an eternal all-star. I like him a little bit in Vintage to stop Yawgmoth's Will-type combos, but where I really like him is in both Legacy and in Modern. There are so many decks that he comes out stops combos, gets you back into the game, and has a real effect on the board. Gaining life matters a lot. I love this guy. Pick him up now while he's cheap. The number seven spot here, this is more of a hopeful. I would love to see Wild Nakatl unbanned in modern. Yes, Nakatl is an amazing beat stick as a 3-3 for one casters, but this is a format where there's Lightning Bolt, where there's a Swords to Plowshares and Path to Exile, it can easily also be dealt with with things like engineered explosives. I don't think he's too powerful for the format. And he fights on a different axis from Deathrite Shaman. So it adds more interesting, aggressive decks like Countercat back into the environment. Number six spot here, they're going to announce Modern Masters 2 sometime but it's not going to be released until 2015. We're not going to see Modern Masters every year. My guess is we'll see Modern Masters every two to three years, and they'll do some type of a giant Grand Prix to release it. Probably even two Grand Prix, one in Europe and one in the U.S. Number five spot here, I've got Liliana the Veil. She is the most incredible fair planeswalker. Very, very playable. Nice ways to counter the strategies that she puts forward in anti-discard. She is a personal favorite in modern right now, and I can see her moving from where she is currently at the $45 range up to $70 to $80 by the end of the year. She's a huge fan favorite. I love her. Definitely happy to trade for her anytime. The number four spot here, it's been a while since power has really moved in price. It's slowly been creeping up over time, but we have vintage masters announced in Magic Online, and this is going to reinvigorate excitement around the vintage format. Vintage will never be a big tournament format, but I've already seen here in the Northwest a few different locations, including Mirkwood and Card Kingdom, putting on vintage events that include some type of a casual proxy structure, and it has increased the sale of these older cards. The power cards are going to jump 20 to 30 percent after the Vintage Masters gets released. It's going to be a lot of fun to open these up and 
and a few select players are going to decide, you know, I would like to have those for my personal collection, and there's just so few of them out there. Number three here is Onslaught Lands. I do not think the Onslaught Lands will be reprinted in 2014. I know we're going to see a new land cycle coming in M15, uh, but I do not think it will be the Fetch Lands and Polluted Delta. It is already very difficult to get at the $90 to $100 range. It's a wonderful card. It's not on the reserve list, though, so maybe I'm being a little bit overly optimistic on the price. I don't think it's going to see a reprint, and if it doesn't see a reprint, it's going to continue to climb in price. My guess is $150 by the end of the year. Number two spot here, I'm guessing that we'll see a Celestia Planeswalker. It's the only Planeswalker combination of the guilds that has not been revealed so far. We just saw a Simic one going to be released in Born of the Gods. I'm super excited about a really tournament competitive green-white Planeswalker. I would love to see some type of a new Planeswalker. I don't think it will be a Gideon or an Elspeth or an Ajani as each of them recently got reprinted. I'm excited about this and I really hope to see it this next year. Number one spot here. I'm going way out on. I love slivers. Lots of people love slivers. M14 had slivers. My guess is the next commander product, which I'm assuming is going to be a year from now. So in the fall, we'll see another release of cool commander decks, which I would definitely pick up. will have slivers. will have multicolored slivers in it. One of the decks will be sliver based, and it's going to shoot those old M14 at the time slivers up in price. It's going to make slivers a competitive deck in Legacy, and it's going to be a lot of fun to play in the casual formats. Yes, I know I'm going out on a huge limb here with this prediction as I've heard nothing about this. I think I'm the only person making this prediction. It could just be a huge hope on my part. I love Slivers so much and I would love to see them come out in force in 2014. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. If I missed any predictions here or you've got better predictions, please post them in the comments. I want to see your hopes, dreams, and wants for 2014.